Okay, hello, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our highly anticipated webinar entitled Integrated Beam Process from Project Inception until Operation. So, on behalf of PCSS, we are excited to have you all with us today as we delve into the topic. So, I'm Azlan Zamahagi, and I'll be your host for this afternoon session. Okay. So, next. Uh, so before we begin, let's get over for a few housekeeping details to ensure a smooth and engaging webinar experience for everyone. So first and foremost, please be informed that this webinar will be recorded for future viewing and to be distributed to those unable to attend today. So if you miss any part of it or wanted to revisit the content later, you can visit our official YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Secondly, we would like to request that all participants to keep their microphones muted throughout the webinar. So this will help to minimize any background noises and ensures that everyone can hear you speak our speakers clearly. So if you have any questions, you'll have the chance to ask the question by typing them into the chat box throughout the session at the presentations. So we highly encourage active participation from our audience. So don't be shy and leave your questions in the chat, uh, chat box. So our team will be monitoring the questions and we will do our best to address the, them. So thirdly, attendance will be only shared via QR code at the end of the session together with the feedback forms. So do stay with us until the end of the session to be able to scan the QR code. Okay, so next. So before we start uh, a little bit, a little introduction on PCSS, uh, we are PCSS is a premier project management solutions provider focused on enhancing organizational profits through the implementation of industry leading practices. So with expertise spanning from project management officers, software training, integration, planning and team management, we want to ensure our clients to achieve sustained success in project delivery. So backed by over 35 years of collective experience in project controls, we offer specialized solutions that elevate capabilities and maintain a competitive advantage. As a one-stop shop, PCSS is committed to meeting diverse project management needs. So moreover, we specialize in digital construction, covering beam services, 4D simulation, optimization of tools such as drones, AR, VR, to name a few. So this emphasizes our dedication to staying technologically advanced and providing innovative solutions for the digital transformation of the construction industry in the region. So as to date, we have partnership with several industry leaders in their respective fields. So namely Oracle, Bentley, Plus3, Xtor, and ARX Media. So our services are also backed with the accreditation from the following bodies, such as PMI, SMA, APTT, Synchro, CIDB, IEM, and all our training and trainers are HRDF Corporation accredited. So with that said, I believe you are all set for an informative and engaging session. So if you haven't already, grab your notepads and get ready to absorb these valuable insights on our topics today. So now let's get back to our main event. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great, great pleasure that I introduce our distinguished speaker for today's webinar. So please join me in welcoming Al Zamri Ismail, uh, BIM president of the BIM Institute of Malaysia. So a little bit in background on Al Zamri. He graduated from the University of Houston in Texas with dual de double degrees in Bachelor of Science in Environmental Design and Bachelor of Architecture, so where he laid a solid foundation for his careers. From there on, he has garnered extensive expertise and insight into various aspects of architectural practice with over 31 years of experience in the industry. So now he is the Managing Director of ZKI Architects, in which Al Zamri leads a team that offers comprehensive architectural interior design and building information modeling services. So AR Zamri's professional journey is marked by a notable achievement, one of which is attending his professional architect certification at the, younger, at the young age of 36. So in his most recent role as the president of the BIM BIM Institute of Malaysia, AR Zamri aspire in advancing the industry's uh, technological landscape with a vision to transform the BIM Institute into a pivotal platform for multidisciplinary practices in BIM. He aims to spearhead the widespread adoption of integrated BIM across Malaysia. 
So today, Al Zamri will share his valuable insights derived from his experience shedding light on the new frontier in BIM process. So please join me in extending a warm welcome to our Al Zamri. Okay. So without further ado, uh, I would like to invite uh, our guest speaker today, Al Zamri Ismail, President of BIM Institute of Malaysia to share uh, his knowledge on integrated BIM process from project inception until operation. So the floor is yours, uh, uh, A.R. Zambri. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, okay. okay, Muhammad Azlan. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all uh, uh, respective uh, guests from various uh, locations. Uh, as introduced by our uh, chairperson, I would say, Chair Azlan, <laughs> for our uh, compare. Um, our presentation today will... Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet, Chair Azlan. Uh, yeah. ah. Okay, okay. Good. Okay, uh, our presentation today, the time allocated is about one and a half hour, Jazlan. Um, yes, sir. I would, I would like to say uh, we may have to uh, draft one because the topic that uh, I suggested is it, quite, uh, I would say, uh, to be a practitioner is considered a bit heavy, <laughs> but uh, the mode of uh, delivery today in, in this webinar will be more of a Friday afternoon uh, uh, informal discussion, uh, more like a sharing session of what we have been through uh, in implementation of BIM in our project, uh, specifically as uh, uh, I have put in the title, Integrated BIM Process from Project Inception until Operation, which is, uh, I would say, full spectrum of BIM. Um, special focus on procurement and contract with BIM related to healthcare facilities. Okay. Um, first of all, I would just like to introduce uh, BIM Institute. Uh, BIM Institute has been established uh, since 2016, but it's not very uh, uh, well known at the moment uh, due to after the pandemic, the activity was stalled and now we are trying to revive it again. And then uh, these are among members of our organization. Uh, myself as a president, uh, the Deputy Edna, and uh, Secretary Pornafisa and Andy Tiong is our Vice President of Operation. And uh, Juan Fauzia and Ame are among committee members. Okay, our presentation, my presentation today will cover uh, overview of the importance of integrated BIM process in healthcare facilities, uh, delivery process from design until completion and operation. And then a brief introduction about AECO, and then uh, the importance of all stakeholders from inception until operation. Okay, uh, BIM has been around for quite some time. Uh, I have one of our uh, our case studies that I would like to present um, was done in 2009. So until the recent one that I would like to bring up as, as an example project here, which is uh, Hospital Kajang and Hospital uh, Langkawi, which is in progress. Kajang is almost completed. Okay, uh, a bit of overview. Uh, why, uh, or rather, what is the importance of integrated beam process in healthcare facilities? And uh, I just would like to have a discussion with the slide showing the notes. If uh, if any of those points interest you further, yes, you can read further. But basically, by implementation of BIM in 
delivering healthcare facility project, it will enhance collaboration. It will improve design and planning. And we aspire to uh, efficiently deliver project with cost and time saving. Uh, in terms of the whole life cycle of the project, uh, will uh, facilitate ease of management uh, due to the information reach of BIM model. And then the outcome, uh, the finished product or the delivery of completed hospital will improve uh, patient outcome and safety. Because as you know, those who are involved in uh, hospital project, either as designer or contractor, hospital, I would say, is the most complex or difficult project to do. When I was in Houston, uh, my final semester was in healthcare design studio. And Houston has a very comprehensive uh, medical center where the whole city is full of hospitals, medical schools, uh, pharmacy, dentistry, and uh, specialist centers. So uh, we have that kind of exposure. And then coming back, uh, we had the opportunity to get involved with hospital project. And with BIM, it helped us uh, a lot uh, starting from design stage until uh, delivery of LOD 500. And we also uh, help in terms of ensuring the regulatory compliance, um, starting from generating all the submission drawing for compliance to various authorities like KKM, CCAP, local authorities, Mumba, and so on. And of course, now with the buzzword of ESG, environmental, social, and governance, sustainability, and energy efficiency is, is very uh, uh, helpful by using BIM uh, because we can apply all those uh, sustainability design tools or, or software. Rather. So integrated BIM process offer numerous advantages for healthcare facilities, including uh, improved collaboration, cost and time saving, better design and planning, life cycle management, enhanced uh, patient outcome, safety, regulatory compliance, and sustainability, as I mentioned earlier. So by leveraging BIM technology, stakeholders can create high-performing healthcare environment that meet the evolving needs of patients, staff, and communities, and also help in terms of reducing uh, maintenance costs and downtime in terms of operation uh, or business operation of hospital in case of uh, private hospital, for example. Okay, uh, as quickly, just, just a, a, a refresher, uh, when I mentioned AECO or the whole spectrum of uh, BIM implementation for building, of course, we involve uh, architects or architecture. Uh, these are among the architect responsibility um, from conception or sometimes brief formulation all the way up to uh, functionality, aesthetic, compliance with building code, sustainability principles. And then you have to work closely with the client need interaction. For example, we do RDI, room data interaction, RDE, uh, room uh, uh, four wall, uh, room data elevation. And then uh, of course we produce detail drawing, uh, shop drawings, even fabrication drawing uh, for construction process. And throughout the project, architect will, of course, ensuring uh, the implementation is as per design intent. And still, we can still use uh, BIM technology for uh, augmented reality drone application and so on. Okay, similarly, of course, uh, engineering is a very, very uh, involved, especially in mechanical electrical system. We're talking about maybe 30 different systems in terms of uh, trades that involve. And of course, throughout the process, it involves a lot of uh, coordination. And then we come to construction, or we call it LOD 400. When designers hand over LOD 300 model to contractor, where the main contractor will hand over to subcontractor to develop the BIM model further 
for fabrication, ensuring clash free, and then pass to the uh, subcontractor for fabrication or shop drawing and eventually for construction. So ensuring smooth construction and reducing downtime, delay and wastages. And for operation, when you talk about beam level three or integrated beam, you will hand over LOD 500 or SBIT model to the uh, operation and maintenance team, ensuring uh, this is happen during the handover after certification of CCC, Certificate of Completion and Compliance. And of course, in, in most cases, uh, contractually in Malaysia, CPC or Certificate of Com uh, Practical Completion coincide with CCC or a Certificate of Completion and Compliance. And uh, this, with the information rich beam model, uh, by delivering project with a uh, federated model full of information, complete with all the relevant documents, uh, contractual obligation and so on, ensuring that the smooth operation and maintenance after the hospital has been uh, delivered for daily operation and also ensuring all the uh, required functionality, safety and comfort for equipments. OK, the word integration and collaboration is synonymous with BIM, where we use different uh, platform, especially you talk about cloud computing. Uh, you can use uh, BIM Cloud whether you use being Collaborate Pro or other platform. Uh, and the key aspect of AHO is a seamless integration and collaboration among architecture, engineering, construction, and operation team. So basically what we do in BIM to get the most uh, benefits of BIM is to get all the players or stakeholders to be involved from the beginning. Uh, to build the building virtually first, ensuring a proper coordination and, and better design quality before you actually construct on site. Among other advantage of using BIM, uh, especially during RDI room data interaction and, and RDE room data elevation or four wall, is to ensure alignment with local health care needs and regulation, especially you talk about KKM, uh, planning department or in case of uh, private healthcare facilities, uh, CCAP. So in this process, it can be more participatory because uh, when we present for RDI, for example, we use BIM model uh, with four screens if we, if we meet face to face or if we meet online because the lengthy uh, process of RDI and RDE require a lot of interaction among the users by departments and ensuring every single detail is fulfilled and understood by the uh, operation teams. OK, uh, BIM also help in terms of enhancing user experience and operational efficiencies. So by getting them involved and understanding what we are doing in terms of designing and constructing by demonstrating the 3D model you can uh, explore the model in terms of uh, information and graphic 3D model can be intuitively uh, understood and also they can make very effective comment to ensure that they are comfortable even to sign off the design in coordination to proceed with construction. So facilitating collaboration and communication, this also involves, as I mentioned, uh, it will help uh, is the decision making process. Um, in terms of uh, communication, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we use uh, BIM Collaborate Pro, for example, as a cloud, uh, um, we call it CDE, Common Data Environment, or collaboration platform. For ease of communication, there is no uh, miscommunication because every uh, communication is, is properly uh, recorded or rather any problem to be assigned is done through the software or cloud platform and will be emailed to the respective uh, person in charge. OK, in terms of project inception uh, phase, OK, this phase, 
I'm, I'm not covering a lot in, in, in that sense. Uh, there are three uh, different uh, components. First, identifying stakeholders and their requirement. Uh, B, preliminary design conceptualization with BIM. And C, uh, pardon my, my typo, C is establishing project goals and objective. Okay, this I, I may not have enough uh, time to elaborate further, but uh, at the inception stage, uh, actually, we are already implementing BIM by uh, ensuring our project brief or need statement or design brief is properly documented. Even in, in some instances, we use a problem seeking book, uh, architectural programming primer to ensure that we understand the problem before we come up with a problem statement or design brief. Uh, for design, design for the designer to start uh, designing. Okay, this is one example uh, of the organizational structure for one of our project as a case study. Uh, under Ministry of Health as the client or, or the project owner, and then the project implementation team will be under JKR in most uh, or PWD. Yeah? In most cases. The project will be implemented using design and build, uh, JKR 203A. So design and build, as you know, uh, under the condition of contract, there is no provision for BIM. So what they do, they attach other volume. Uh, they call it JKR BIM requirement. So this is the part where uh, the I would say miss a bit of misalignment in terms of uh, delivery process with BIM and normal conventional design and build. Because the time given and the time for approval of design RDI, RDE may not be enough uh, to complete the design coordination, the routing, modeling, and so on to ensure class free before the contractor can start on site. But if they were to do that with the uh, but the relatively short time frame, they may not be able to complete the construction on time. So this is something that I will discuss further when we talk about uh, procurement process, contract condition, and so on. Under the roles and responsibility metrics, this is part of uh, BIM project execution plan under one of the project. Uh, we define clearly uh, the roles of main uh, roles in BIM implementation starting from BIM modeler, BIM coordinator, and BIM manager. Okay, this is a BIM work process chart. As you can see, uh, the workflow as indicated here, uh, starting with design, including the design brief preparation or need statement should be. And then uh, this should involve all the consultants, namely architect, uh, such a mechanical, electrical, ICT, civil, landscape, and, and so on, including like medical planner. And then after design stage uh, is the coordination stage where it involves all the design team. And then at design stage LOD 300, um, the coordination done, so whether you're using uh, Navis work, or if using uh, CDE, Big Collaborate Pro, then you can do uh, coordination using model coordination function inside uh, Big Collaborate Pro, for example. And then ensuring is crash free. And then the deliverable at this stage is LOD 300, a complete LOD 300 for all discipline. Then at construction stage, uh, the designer will hand over the LOD 300 model to the contractor's team and each uh, subcontractor for each trade will develop the LOD 300 model into LOD 400 for shop drawing or shop model for fabrication and ensuring with all the connections and so on, uh, leveling, ensuring that there is no clash or other clash free model for them to proceed with construction. And then upon completion of construction, there will be verification on site based on the BIM model, uh, BIM drawing, detail drawing, LOD 400. Uh, upon completion, 
all the federated model already found out with all the information, annotation, and also uh, document, whether in PDF format or, or any other catalog format, will be all embedded into the B model, where we call federated SB model or LOD 500 for the asset management or facility management team uh, to manage the facilities, maintain and ensuring smooth operation thereafter throughout the life cycle. Okay, this is in brief the process uh, uh, or rather beam process at design stage, or we call it the coordinated beam model then uh, will generate construction drawing to be issued for construction and coordination uh, at LOD 400 for, for subcontractors and fabricators. Of course, uh, in Malaysia, the reality nowadays, um, we still have the scarcity of uh, competency among subcontractors and fabricator or even manufacturer of medical equipment, for example. They are still lacking in terms of providing parametric beam model for contractor, which is a requirement in case of uh, JKR. Uh, so what we what they will do most of the time, they will have to engage the third party to do the family or parametric model for them. So this sometimes it may also cost uh, additional cost to them if during the tender stage they may not factor in cost of doing B model in in the tendering of the subcontractor, for example. This is something that main contractor have to pay attention to. Okay, during construction stage. Uh, this is actually most of, of the contractor when they encounter a consultant team or client that impose upon consultant to have BIM, uh, they may see it as additional load or additional burden to them. But actually, uh, especially for design and big contractor, if they use BIM, this is actually an opportunity for them to save costs where the contract price is already locked, if they were to do a uh, beam process, we resulted in cost saving in terms of uh, reduction of uh, waste stages or re reduction of uh, rework and uh, faster construction process, they will gain a lot. Uh, for a record, they can gain between 10 to even 19% at construction stage. So this is something that the contractor should pay attention to. Uh, some people ask, you know, uh, is there any proof that the contractor can actually save costs at this construction stage? Yes, it may not happen now or, or, or in Malaysia yet because the number of projects that he completed is, is not many. Uh, for full beam uh, implementation, end-to-end -end, uh, beam implementation, uh, in the UK, in other countries, yes, they have done audit, even by uh, well-known audit firm. Yes, they can save up to 19.5%. Okay, in terms of submission or SB model, this is just to show you uh, as a reference uh, in terms of uh, deliverables under JKR beam requirement for the dynamic project. So when we complete the LOD 500, uh, model or rather as built, uh, it will be updated. You have to do all the asset tagging. You have to know the serial number and so on. And you have to work with uh, the Chawangan Asset Bersepadu, for example, to update the asset attribute requirement, preparation of ready-made model, and preparation of architecture drawing. So all this for as built drawing submission as well as as built model LOD 500. Okay, this is to show uh, an extract from uh, BIM project execution plan. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, collaboration strategy in our project. As I mentioned, we use Autodesk BIM Collaborate Pro. For your information, uh, according to Autodesk, a hospital Kajang was the first project to use BIM Collaborate Pro at construction stage. This is in replacing BIM 360 uh, when they produce uh, or rather release Autodesk BIM Collaborate Pro 
Hospital Kajang was the first to subscribe or to use this uh, CDE. Uh, but of course, at that time, it was it was at a later stage and the delay caused by pandemic, uh, then it dragged the completion a bit. But nevertheless, we use it uh, up to that stage and uh, not just for file sharing. You can also use it for uh, coordination uh, among different disciplines for checking and updating the uh, drawing as the design and also implementation stage may have some changes. Uh, due to local authority requirement, bomba, or even sometimes the users or some replacement of certain uh, materials or certain uh, equipment that may not may no longer be in, in the market. So some adjustment has to be done for that. Towards preparing the final LOD 500 as bit model. Okay, uh, normally in uh, design and build contract, contractor tend to just or just to acknowledge that they will do all these uh, BIM requirements, starting from design model, spatial requirement analysis, RDI, room data interaction, and then tender drawing produced from BIM model, construction drawing produced from BIM model, and finally the SBIT drawing or SBIT model also produced and delivered from BIM model, as far as drawing for SBIT, uh, for example. And then uh, during, of course, during construction uh, stage or construction phase, the construction models have to be updated from time to time if there's any changes. This is by the contractor. As I mentioned earlier, uh, BIM LOD 100, 200 and 300 under the uh, design team or consultant. Uh, upon producing construction drawing from LOD 300, the model will be handed over to contractor for LOD 400 until the completion of LOD 500. The consultant will uh, coordinate again, ensuring that the completed model also fulfill all the design intent, design requirement and compliance. Okay. Uh, just to elaborate a bit further, uh, design and development phase, uh, this is where, as I mentioned earlier, we use Bing Collaborate Pro. Uh, for Hospital Langkawi, for example, uh, we had the opportunity to get involved very early in, in the process, even at tender stage. Whereas I myself, for example, as the Bing Manager for Hospital Kajang, uh, were involved uh, after the uh, ground floor construction, so a bit late but it's not too late, um, simply because sometimes the understanding of the contractor may see the requirement under uh, JKR BIM requirement as purely contractual. But actually, if you don't get the BIM manager involved from the beginning or you don't have proper LOD up to LOD 300 model, you may have problem at LOD 400 and 500. Uh, to elaborate further, some uh, site supervisor by discipline, for example, like mechanical or even electrical, they may not approve for uh, construction or even installation until they see the uh, short drawing, until they approve the short drawing that is clash free generated from BIM model. So, this is why the time that you know the contractor may have delay due to lack of BIM model and uh, clash free. So because JKR, for example, they have uh, quite a large uh, or well staffed uh, BIM team, uh, multidiscipline, and now those, those I would say, experts in BIM uh, uh, transfer or relocate to each uh, head of design team or HODT uh, for project implementation. So these people, they know what is BIM and, and when they review or they do uh, model verification, they know exactly what they want because that is what they do. They are specialized in BIM, in JKR. So the contractor uh, or even the consultant have to comply with the requirement and it has to be fulfilled. Uh, okay, this is the part where I would like to uh, emphasize 
where throughout five years of doing uh, Hospital Kajang and uh, Hospital Langkawi now is about about two years already, which is at the middle uh, beginning of the construction stage. I can see that the uh, by attaching or rather annexing uh, beam requirement to design and build contract under GKR, um, it may not work uh, effectively because the time duration given for the design and construction, I would say a bit too short. That's why the contractor is rushing to do piling, to do uh, ground beam, even before RDI or RDE uh, has been completed and before the modeler can even do the final uh, routing model and do a proper clash analysis, coordination and so on. So among uh, the form of contracts available internationally, uh, IPD, for example, in the US has been implemented early in early 2000. Uh, so for construction that incorporate BIM protocols and elements, uh, these are among the known uh, form of contract, like design and big contract, public private partnership contract, construction management contract, FIDIC contract or International Federation of Consulting Engineers. Uh, as you know, BIM is not just for building. BIM, Building Information Modeling, is also for infrastructure project, be it rail project, bridges, roads, or even other uh, infrastructure project like airport and so on. NEC contract, New Engineering contract, AIA, the American Institute of Architects, and JCT, the Joint Contract Tribunal from UK, United Kingdom. Okay, just a brief explanation uh, because our our title today is special focus on procurement and contract which being related to healthcare facilities. We would like to drive into uh, what is the best form of contract that could effectively uh, gain the full benefits of BIM uh, without rushing to construction even before the model can be fully coordinated or completed properly and then plus the approval from relevant bodies in, in relation to hospital design and uh, local authorities approval. So IPD is a contract which is a collaborative agreement where all project stakeholders, including the owner, architect, engineers, and contractor, work together from project inception. This is where we call it front loading, or you bring up everybody uh, at the beginning of the project, including the subcontractor, the supplier, fabricator, and knowing exactly what you'll be modeled inside the, uh, in case of building hospital, virtual building or rather complete uh, building before you even build it on site. So BIM protocols and elements are typically integrated into the contract to facilitate coordination and communication among parties. So um, for the lack of the new contract with BIM, uh, BIM protocol can be infused uh, seamlessly uh, and it should take precedence over other condition of contract if in case you find conflict to avoid the limitation of a project team to gain the full benefits of BIM. Okay, design big contract, as you know, uh, in Malaysia is quite common whether you use 203A or other form of design big contract uh, modified or amended. Some GLCs are using their own uh, design and build form of contract, Putrajaya, for example, even uh, Samdabi, but none of those so far have integrated BIM into the contract, simply because um, most of the project team who are in charge of uh, contract and procurement, they may not be well versed in BIM yet. So this is the limitation that we have now. Uh, PPP or Public private partnership contract. So, this also involves uh, a collaboration between public and private entities. You know, uh, normally PPP, you relate to financing, design, consult, and operate, or some people call it BOT, build, operate, transfer, build, operate, transfer, 
or uh, BLT, least transfer, and so on. So the benefits of BIM, since the build operate transfer, for example, uh, the cost of maintenance, the cost of operation can also be reduced when you have full information of BIM. So that will enhance the profitability uh, for the stakeholders in terms of private uh, involvement, private entity involvement in such project. Lee, let's be whether it's, it is a government facilities, a hospital in this case, or other projects, uh, infrastructure, for example. And uh, construction management contract, this is another form of uh, contracts where you can integrate beam protocols and element into it. Predicts, another example, you can incorporate beam protocols and element. And then uh, new engineering contract, you can also integrate beam protocols and element. American Institute of Architects, AIA uh, contract. In, in the US, as, as you know, BIM started in, in the US for a long time ago, but since the American government practice what we call a laissez faire, they don't interfere so much in how we do business. Uh, there's no such thing as mandating the use of BIM. Unlike what we do in Malaysia for JKR project, they make it mandatory for the project team to use BIM. So similar to the UK, but US, since their policy is, is is as such, so there's no mandate for uh, government project to use BIM. But AIA form of contract uh, enable use enable you to use BIM by incorporating protocols and element in the contract documents. JCT similar, but this is for UK. You can incorporate or accommodate uh, BIM technology into the contract condition or condition of contracts. So in short, uh, under the procurement and uh, contracting consideration with BIM in healthcare facilities, so when you incorporate BIM protocols and element into construction contract, it is essentially to ensure that the contract documents clearly define the responsibilities, rights, and obligations, just like in any other contract. The contract administrator must understand clearly uh, what is rights and obligation of all the stakeholders or parties involved in the contract. And BIM is the best uh, uh, platform or the reason why it should be incorporated in condition of contract is simply to avoid disputes to avoid unnecessary EOT or even meetings, unnecessary meetings to reduce meetings, to reduce RFI, to reduce uh, uh, non-compliance and so on. So these are among the benefits of being to be incorporated in contracts conditions to avoid such uh, disputes or, or rather to reduce disputes. And, and cost escalation and EOT and so on. So it clearly defines the responsibilities, rights, and obligation of the parties concerning BIM implementation, data exchange. There is no data loss, hard to find information, um, different version, wrong version. So if you use uh, CDE, like BIM Collaborate Pro, for example, so the data is 24 7 available depending on your access level uh, managed by like what I'm doing now. I'm also the system or the uh, admin administrator. And then uh, I can assign access level to all the uh, participants. Of course, they have to have license if they were to work using a uh, cloud link or the, the true CDE uh, common data environment where they can uh, save Revit as uh, cloud model and so on. So all the uh, amendment will be updated when they publish to the uh, CDE or being Collaborate Pro. And then the modeling standard, of course, JKR, they have their own standards, uh, but that is for their own internal use. 
for example, like file naming, the model structure, and so on. So all this coordination process will be seamless and transparent and as much as possible to avoid unnecessary disputes, unnecessary meeting where time is wasted, uh, like the conventional uh, delivery process. So additionally, the contract should address issues related to intellectual property rights. This is important. Who own the big model that you design? It's just like when 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 you are given any trust, you are supposed to use that for that purpose only. In other words, yes, the B model are shared inside the CDE or cloud. Anybody with the right to create, to edit, or even to download, yes, they can do that, but it shall not be abused. It shall only be used for the intention of the project and they shall not keep it without authorization. So anybody who to violate this are uh, liable. The person is liable under this uh, contract once it is incorporated in the condition of contract. And any dispute resolution specific to bin and enable project should be spelled out whether that can be resolved through mediation, through arbitration, or finally, of course, to the court of law. But the idea is to reduce dispute, reduce unnecessary uh, stress. So working with BIM is, is more uh, convenient and uh, less headache, hopefully less heart attack. Anyway, so uh, for JKR, this is the form of uh, contract that JKR use most of the time for design and build uh, public work department. Just an example where we use this for our project. OK, just like to highlight, uh, you know, PCSS is famous for 4D BIM yeah? uh, with Synchro. Of course, this is not Synchro. We don't use Synchro yet. Uh, this is a Microsoft project, but I'm not advertising the software. Just give you an example where even the planner having difficulties in putting where should they put BIM inside the program or schedules. So it's just a matter of putting putting one item and apply it throughout the project. Whereas it should be in tandem with all other activities because beam start with 1D, one dimension eh, from the project initiation or brief formulation or rather uh, brief statement or design brief. That is already beam where you have to interact with the user, the end user in order to formulate the design brief before you even start designing for the intended purpose. And of course, you go to 2D, 3D, 4D, uh, 4D in terms of uh, sequencing or uh, we call it uh, planning and scheduling simulation. And uh, you can simulate the construction process even to a point you can include uh, other elements of construction such as the machinery, crane, tower crane, the movement of material and so on. But just as an example here, when we try to force BIM into the existing uh, form of contract, it may not fall in place. It, it may not take precedence or it may not take the importance. So most of the time people say, oh, BIM doesn't work. BIM doesn't work because BIM lambat. BIM is so slow. Uh, but BIM need time, just like when you need something when you plant a tree, you cannot get the fruit immediately. You need time. It need not you need time to to process and, and to mature in terms of ensuring the coordination uh, and clash free before you start producing uh, construction drawing for construction, for example. This is another example where, as you can see, uh, compared to where we start uh, and and uh, using BIM. And where do we start and finish room data interaction, for example, where it takes 60 days, uh, room data elevation take another 61 days. These two is already taking four months. And normally the LOD 300 will not be produced clash free until the room data elevation is completed, where the fixtures, the lighting fixture, the diffuser, the mecha mecha mechanical, uh, installation or equipment inlet and outlet is decided. 
and then you can do the routing model in the above ceiling, inside the wall, under the floor, and so on. So you can see how from this uh, schedule that uh, when you try to force BIM into existing contract and, and try to deliver just like conventional, it may not work to the full advantage. Okay, just to share uh, with you the uh, procurement strategies and contracting condition with BIM in healthcare under GKR. I have the whole document, but of course I will not share that. Uh, I think it's sufficient just to show the uh, content or rather the table of content of uh, JKR BIM requirement. So these are among the requirements uh, that they annex or they attach to the existing uh, form of contract. So it become part of the contract, yes, but the timing, the deliverables, okay, still following the conventional design and build contract. So this is the problem when they do not allow enough time and the sequence where BIM need to take precedence is, 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 is not aligned properly. So in the end, the site staff or site uh, team cannot wait for class free uh, model before they can proceed with piling, pile cap, plumbing under the lowest ground floor and so on. So what happening now, the BIM team is trying to chase the site. And hopefully by we by the time we reach level level two or three, then we can be ahead of construction team. So this is the I would say the lacking or rather the weakness when those people who draft the uh, form of contract may not have enough knowledge or competency uh, to integrate or to incorporate beam protocols and element into the contract or other condition of contract. So this becomes just an addition or an attachment to the existing contract. So inside there, of course, they have all these uh, uh, beam objective, develop, deliverables, the platform and software to use. So these are the responsibility of beam manager to understand and to include all this inside the BPEP or beam project execution plan. So you have to name all the manager, coordinator and modeler. You have to state the quality and then they have to state the standard to use uh, in terms of quality, model quality and the convention, uh, the file naming convention, uh, the model structure, whether you use uh, uh, modeling block by block or level by level, for example, like hospital, because it's so heavy, then they allow model to be done level by levels, especially the clinical level. But for other facilities like quarters or car park, you can do block by block. So these are example of a uh, model development phase and beam deliverables. You know, they require all the disciplines models, architecture, structure, civil, mechanical, and so on. And then the tender drawing has to be delivered, the sample of SB model during uh, contract uh, tendering stage. And then the detailed design phase, you have to produce class analysis. They require a Navis work, a class analysis report, and then the final LOD 300 coordination uh, coordinated model. And then at construction stage, of course, they require LOD 400 uh, to do uh, construction models, class analysis, class free. This is they stated clearly they need a class free model before they can produce. Uh, as built, uh, sorry, because they can produce uh, uh, short models to, produ to produce to uh, produce fabrication and construction or installation on site, and then finally toward uh, they also require simulation of the model where you show the sequence, you link the uh, scheduling uh, file to either you use uh, Navis work to show the sequencing or the simulation of construction process. And then finally, uh, the class out phase, uh, class out phase or SBIT model, where you can also, you have to also produce sheets of uh, SBIT drawing from the SBIT model. And then all the 
ownership and rights belong to JKR for that model in this contract. All right. Okay, these are examples of what you can include in the BIM protocols and element into the uh, form of contracts, selected form of contract. That's why if you if you were to do a form of contract that enable BIM protocols and element to be incorporated seamlessly or it should work effectively so that the benefits of BIM can be fully implemented. The drafter of such contract must understand or must have experience in, in delivering project using BIM, especially for healthcare, very complex hospital design. And imagine if any project, like hospital now can easily cost 300, 400 million. If you can save at, at construction stage alone, even 10% from the conventional uh, construction process, that is already 400, out of 400 million, already 40 million saving. So it was the while of thinking or, or trying to do it, or even uh, endeavor to, to ensure you get the full benefit of BIM by implementing it in the project. So one is build execution plan, two, LOD or level of development specification. Uh, this is very technically uh, rigorous, for example, like LOD specification define the level of detail and accuracy required for BIM element at different stages of the project, ensuring consistency and clarity in modeling efforts. You have to also, for example, specify what is the tolerance when you set the clash analysis. You know, if the overlapping between concrete slab and tile, for example, um, what is the tolerance so that when you do class analysis, it will not uh, detect as clash. 3mm, you know, for example, you, you have to set. It cannot be just exactly 1mm. Uh, Reality-wise, it, it may not be uh, uh, achieved. And then you can incorporate model coordination procedure. How are you going to coordinate the model? So that can be included in the contract. Data exchange standard. What file are you going to use a uh, native file or you can use uh, NF, uh, IFC or, or what uh, data exchange, ensuring that you will not in, in, in encounter data loss in, in transferring. Uh, if you use similar software, for example, like you use Revit for structure and uh, civil 3D for civil, uh, that can easily be uh, exchange or, or, or very compatible. And then five, uh, model authorship and ownership. Uh, this is very important to spell out in the contract. Who owns the model? Who will do the authorship? Or who will create the model? And then uh, number six, BIM software and version control. This is important to ensure as a BIM manager, uh, as you know, for example, like Revit, you cannot downgrade. You can only upgrade. So if other parties are using different version, then you cannot do coordination, you have to upgrade. Of course, now software is very expensive because in US dollar, some people are reluctant to upgrade if it's not necessary. So this has to be uh, considered as well. And once BIM manager has decided the version to use, everybody has to comply. And that will be put in the BIM project execution plan, which is a, a life model with the which will be updated by the BIM manager from time to time. But toward deliverables, the uh, client, like example JKR, they will require the final handing over will be the latest model, the latest version. For example, like uh, now they may require uh, Revit 2023 for the deliverable or handing over. So BIM use and deliverables should also be spelled out in the contract where it outlines the specific users, deliverables required for the project, such as class detection report, quantity takeoff, construction sequence simulation, facility management data, uh, asset tagging, and so on and so forth for FM. And number eight, uh, information, information exchange requirements. So this will define the requirement for information exchange format, protocols, and frequency to ensure timely and accurate exchange of BIM data among project stakeholders. 
so that once it's spelled out in the contract, there's no dispute and everybody has to comply. Responsibilities for BIM implementation. Uh, it should clearly delineate the responsibility of each party regarding BIM implementation, including staffing requirement, training and resources allocation. Uh, this is the part where we may have problem. The word is collaboration. If anybody among the team members, among the consultant designers, for example, uh, delay in delivering the model, then the coordination cannot be done uh, as a complete system. So the delay caused by one party may affect others. Let's say if architect have uh, 10 staff, but uh, electrical maybe only have one staff, and then you have problem because they may not be able to catch up and the whole project team will be delayed in terms of delivering the uh, the debt, the due or, or meeting the deadline. BIM legal and contractual issues. Okay, the idea of using BIM is actually and and uh, for record in terms of uh, precedent case, it reduce a lot of potential dispute or, or legal dispute or contractual issues because it's done rather transparent and everybody knows what is everybody is doing in terms of rights and obligation, and uh, it it should be uh, efficient and uh, less potential dispute. All right. OK, just to show a bit of a uh, construction stage, of course, we I, I don't have much of, of example, but I will show just in terms of photo a little on. Uh, for construction stage, utilizing beam construction and planning and coordination is important, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if you are a contractor, beam will help a lot in terms of uh, your material, material ordering, for example. You can get immediate quantity with plus minus a few, one or two uh, small percentage of wastages to order extra. And then uh, you can simulate uh, using BIM model and link to your uh, scheduling software. And you know exactly uh, what uh, resources to allocate in terms of your financial resources, uh, machinery, and also labor on site. So that helps reduce wastage or unnecessary uh, idling of, of machinery or, or manpower or even uh, shortage of manpower when you need it the most. So it help proper planning when you can do proper simulation. And on-site implementation of BIM technology, of course, you need to have uh, nowadays, uh, if you were to monitor using uh, point cloud scanning, for example, it will help uh, visually graphically monitor the progress on site and plus if you have uh, augmented reality uh, in terms of uh, uh, gps uh, uh, equip uh, devices yes you can bring your drawing in uh, in in ipad or tab and you do not need a hard copy anymore and uh, the access to those information from the cloud is, is, is very uh, seamless. And then monitoring progress and addressing issues in real time. Of course, you know, you, you can monitor, you can issue a uh, uh, message or, or address to the person in charge at any time during uh, at your convenience and the other person can also reply or, or respond at their own time and the communication is, is very clear, precise and there's uh, very uh, efficient in terms of uh, flow of information and less ambiguity or uh, avoid miscommunication, all right? Okay, in terms of the final stage for facility operation and maintenance, okay, transition from construction to operation can be very smooth because Whatever you construct, you construct it again virtually in the 3D model with all the information, the, the warranty, the manufacturer, the actual material, the uh, manual uh, to maintain and hand over to the operation and maintenance team. So they, they can use that as one of the project that I will show example. Uh, we use the uh, cloud platform for FM and then they use B model 
we link it to Autodesk A360 and they can allow the system administrator can allow access to all the uh, stakeholders, the uh, person in charge to access the model, to assign the information and to extract any data, any schedule or drawing wherever, whenever they need it. And then leveraging uh, BIM for facility management and maintenance. So BIM, actually, I will show you in the next uh, few slides. Uh, in terms of life cycle of the building, of course, you may construct the building, uh, design may take uh, one year, you construct the building three years, but the operation, the life cycle of the building may take 30, 40 years down the line. So if BIM produce any benefit, uh, for FM and uh, operation, the benefits will go a long way and in terms of monetary value, it's a very high value for you to be efficient, energy saving, reduce downtime and so on. Okay, for data management integration with operational system, as I mentioned, I will show you an example. This BIM model, uh, either in native format or IFC, can be uh, a live model because it's contain a parametric uh, information. So if you have any modification or certain space can be flexible, uh, certain soft space, we call it, when you do not have much of services or piping, it can be renovated or rearranged easily using this model and can be implemented on site for minor uh, renovation and so on. Okay, I'll show you some case study example uh, for project that we are involved in. And then uh, I'll go as I go through, uh, uh, as I mentioned, as mentioned by Encik Azlan, you may not be able to ask questions because your mic will be off uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, but toward the end, we will have question and answer. Uh, you can take note or you can uh, comment in the comment section. Okay. So I will show you case study, uh, three case studies, uh, and then what lesson learned and best practice I can share also. And then um, it may not be perfect, but you always learn something during BIM project implementation, the turn and tumble, and you will do better next time. And what are the challenges and solutions in terms of Malaysian context, in terms of implementation of BIM uh, level three or integrated BIM uh, in AECO, Architecture, Engineering, Construction and Operation uh, Industries. Okay, this is a very important slide for us to ponder and to uh, relate. And also, if we could share this to your top management, the decision makers, what it means in terms of bottom line, in terms of dollar and cents, or even triple bottom line. We talk about people, uh, planet and profit. Yes, BIM can produce all that. Uh, some people may underestimate the impact of BIM, maybe simply because they do not understand thoroughly or comprehensively. Some people tend to take BIM as simplistic understanding. BIM is just like AutoCAD. BIM is just like IBS. No, it is not. It is much, much more than that. Okay, this is an example that I would like to relate. I got this uh, diagram from my ex lecturer also from US, Philip Patrick Sun, who designed uh, Chinese Medical Center in or Chinese Hospital in San Francisco. I will share the model afterward. So Philip Patrick Sun put this in a very graphical format that we can understand. Uh, we put construction as one. Let's say construction is 100 million. The cost for design fee is only 0.1 which is 10 million ringgit, for example. The cost of facility operation and maintenance throughout the life cycle, say 30 years, is 4.3 times. So it can be 430 million for FM and maintenance. Imagine if you can, uh, by deploying BIM and deliver the asset model for ease of maintenance and operation, let's say they save 10%. So 10% out of 430 million throughout the last cycle is 43 million saving. So imagine if you were to use BIM from LOD 100, 200, 300, even 400 during construction, 500 for 
uh, asset model, you may spend, let's say, uh, 1% of the construction cost. Okay, 1% of construction cost. Let's say this is 100 million. Maybe you need to spend 1 million for that. So is it worth spending that much if you can save 10% at construction stage or 10 million and 10% at facility operation maintenance phase, which is 43 million? That alone is already 50 million saving of about almost half for the whole life cycle. So is it worth, is it wise for a decision maker to make a decision to spend a bit of money for BIM implementation, for training, for employing staff and so on? So this is something for decision maker to ponder, for the BIM expert or construction manager or even project manager to relay the message to the top decision maker that this is serious. Okay, and more in terms of business operation operating costs. Business we're talking about, of course, for government hospital we may not factor in as as uh, business operation cost because the government is funding for it. Let's say for private hospital, if this, if a, a hospital bill out patient daily, one million ringgit. Okay, so that is the revenue or the business operating cost. Part of it is business operating cost, and of course you minus the cost, you get the profit. But let's say uh, the cost of operating that facilities is forty two times the construction cost throughout the life cycle. So imagine if beam information and the model that can, you can use, which is seamless, easy to uh, refer and retrieve, easy to store in the cloud, accessible, secured, no uh, cluttering or uh, disorganized uh, way of storing data. It helps save time, it helps save cost, and it helps uh, reducing downtime for your operation. Of course, it also gives a better reputation in terms of quality of service and so on. So they have more reason uh, for healthcare facility to use BIM. If you consider at design stage, you benefit from it. You have a uh, good design quality, uh, easy to coordinate, faster delivery at construction stage also, at FM and operation. And the bigger part is the business of that facilities itself in terms of profitability, reducing uh, wastage and so on. Okay, I will run through rather quickly because we are running out of time. I will allow about 15 minutes if there is any Q&A. Um, I will just show you example. This is an example of the extension of Chinese hospital in San Francisco. It was done in 2009. Mr. Philip Patrick Sun came to PAM, the one architect in Malaysia, and present this. Um, of course, through our connection, my ex lecturer at University of Houston, and then he moved to California. Um, this is what he showed us. This is, was done in 2009. The site is very tight and small. And imagine you have to fit in all the services in the ceiling, throughout the ceiling, in the wall, beside the windows, and, and uh, underneath the structure uh, component, the I beam, the page column, and so on. But it has to work. It has to have all the services, the, the water reticulation, medical gas, pneumatic, talk about firefighting, uh, ICT, all the services have to be coordinated and, and completed. This one was completed and uh, you can still uh, maintain it well for replacement of part and so on. Okay. So this is the building, how it looks. It was done in Revit back in 2009. Okay, just to show the transparent, what is inside the wall next to the window, very tight. He, he relate to us how tight it is. And yet, when they produce this model, in the end, in the end, the architect normally charge their fee based on construction costs. But thank you to them, for being efficient, the client pay them less because in the end, they reduce the construction cost. So for that matter, proportionately, the fee is also reduced. So that is a reward or the penalty for being so efficient. It's a bit unfortunate, but they are happy because they produce a good quality and 
for this on time or even uh, ahead of time and uh, worry free in that sense. Okay, this is to show whatever you do inside BIM, you can produce rendering, you can export to 3D Studio Max, for example. This is just to show a bit of history, uh, the Chinese Medical Center. This is where Bruce Lee was born before it was uh, extended, the old hospital in San Francisco. This is where it's done. Okay, just to show the complete design. This is just to share how the quality control and documentation, okay, the chart, uh, the involvement or the, the process flow of, of team leadership in the organization. And then uh, the metrics of responsibility uh, in the whole project team, where it is a very collaborative platform and they have a lot of uh, interaction and to achieve uh, the best result that the team can produce among consultant, contractor, fabricator, supplier, and so on. Okay, in Malaysia, uh, we would like, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in most cases, uh, for public uh, hospital, GKR will be in charge. Yes, they have been. For private hospital, from our information that we got, it's not that well or widely, widely implemented yet. Uh, they, are, they are going into that. They are quite keen. Unless the decision maker or top executive knows what is the benefit of BIM, I'm, I'm sure they will rush to do it, uh, using it and, and they will not be hesitant to spend capital for that. This is just to show example of a hospital. This is the organization workflow. Example of model. This is civil model using a civil 3D. A hospital model for architecture model uh, for interaction, the interaction. Some example, uh, we, are doing, we are doing this in our firm. ZKI Architect is working alongside with ANR Architects. We are doing a BIM model for architecture, medical planning, medical equipment, and also for ID, for interior design. All the drawings are produced from BIM models for submission and, and also for deliverables. This is the car park. This is the quarters. Quarters can be done, as I mentioned earlier, using block by block, whereas a hospital is done level by levels. This is the structure model. Uh, mechanical electrical model for the quarters. Just to show you how extensive the mechanical electrical model. And from the B model, we, <coughs> excuse me, we produce a, a room data sheets. Uh, from the room data sheet, we produce the uh, RDE room data elevation for wall drawing, and also 3D uh, isometric drawings for interaction and to get the approval from each department concern of uh, user from uh, KKM or from hospitals. Okay, examples. This is one uh, level one on site. Level two is in progress. We also do uh, class detection, class analysis using uh, Bing Collaborate Pro. This is under class analysis. We can do visual checking in terms of uh, coordination uh, for multi-discipline. We do simulation as well. This is done for uh, quarters. Of course, I don't have the animation now. And then uh, the uh, clash analysis, as I mentioned earlier. And then this is the clash report. OK, another example is Hospital Kajang. This is what we do, uh, nine level of hospital with the medical block, car park block, and mechanical block. This is how extensive it is. As you can see, uh, for level one, uh, similar to the one that was done in the San Francisco, the Chinese Medical Center. This is what do what we do for Kajang. And it's almost completed now. It's about to be handover, most probably in the near future. It's, it's almost completed. We do complete 3D model with all the equipment and furniture for the wards, for the medical, uh, clinical area, and so on. Okay, so this is uh, a section cut from the model. Okay, we do uh, medical equipment LOD 400 as well. 
including the connection uh, fabrication for dental suite, for example. This is the dental suite, the operation theater. OK, from there, of course, we can render using Revit also for communication or presentation. We use a lot of online meeting and discussion. Um, this is just a, a screenshot of how we interact with the contractors. User. OK, for Hospital Kajang, uh, JKR come up with the tools as a software to assess the impact of BIM implementation. So when they assess our project, they give us 79.1% marks, which is not bad. Um, not excellent, but uh, and then the impact in terms of monetary impact uh, when we avert potential additional costs by class analysis, by resolution of clashes before you actually build. In terms of monetary value, the saving is about 18.7 million ringgit. Of course, it's low because it, the construction is still ongoing and the uh, implementation is, uh, I would say, not uh, fully achieved due to lack of resources, lack of, uh, of course, the pandemic and so on, the delay. So, but still, this is how the assessment, assessment uh, outcome is. So, what are the future trends uh, we expect in terms of emerging technologies? Of course, now people are complaining that the limitation of implementing BIM is the cost, cost of software, cost of training, paying salary and so on. But you have to look at the benefits first. I always ask when you do cost benefit analysis, in case of BIM, you have to understand the benefit first. Then you'll be convinced to implement it or to spend your capital on it. And then with the imaging technology, with open BIM and so on, you can even get a free software now, of course, with limited function. but the competition is there, and then the open beam concept is is in the market already. So these are something that we can look forward and and uh, spend a bit more time on 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 uh, uh, planning for beam implementation in your project whenever you have opportunity. With that, I hand over to Che Azlan. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, uh Zamri. So for such an insightful presentation, so I really hope that one day BIM will be part and parcel of uh, our origin, typical project delivery. So I think, okay, without further ado, I think let's go to towards the questions. Ah. So Q&A. So for those who have any questions with regards to the uh, presentation or anything with regards to BIM, uh, BIM uh, you can ask, uh, write it up. Ah. Write it up on the chat box, so I'll uh, read it aloud. So I think the first question is, uh, is for myself actually. <laughs> so uh, the question is for a typical project, the responsibility of coordinating all the beam processes relies. Uh, I mean, it relies to who, who, who uh, takes up the accountability of coordinating the beam process? Because, as you mentioned just now, uh, the beam process does not only evolve at uh, one phase of the project, so it evolves during the architecture, the engineering, and also the uh, the construction and operational. So, and all these phases are there are different main uh, main contractors, subcontractor, engineering, and uh, consultants, lah. So who, uh, in a typical project, who are actually, uh, 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 who has this ultimate, I mean, uh, coordinating or managing uh, the BIM processes itself, typically? Okay, thank you, Chair uh -huh. Azlan. Okay, the answer to that, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, starting of any project, you should have BIM project execution plan. So the person who are responsible to do BPEP is BIM manager. Okay, BIM manager is not somebody who just came up fresh from from university and, and know how to use Revit and so where and become BIM manager because it involves uh, a lot of uh, understanding of project delivery, contractual uh, compliance with re re related uh, relevant laws and so on. So in, in among the BIM fraternity, we say, uh, you must have experience in delivering project between five to ten years to be a BIM manager. And BIM manager is responsible to coordinate, to assess uh, the BIM team 
from all uh, consultants disciplines and each beam coordinator are responsible to coordinate their own disciplines for example like coordinator for mechanical for electrical because uh, system wise they have to coordinate among we call it uh, intra discipline or intra uh, trades and then interdiscipline yes uh, the coordination must be done by beam manager so this is how we, we manage uh, project in that sense Azlan, does that answer your question uh, uh yes uh -uh. so basically the responsibility is relies on the uh, beam manager ma manager uh. but uh in terms of i mean the uh what do you call it? does this beam manager is a position uh, within the clients, uh, the clients, or is it within the uh, contractors organization, main contractors organization, or the consultants organization? Typically, okay, good question. Uh, because uh -huh. the arrangement can be different, can be can differ. Mm. Like for one project, uh, B manager is appointed by the main contractor, put directly under them. Uh, mm -hmm. For the other project, since they take architect as the lead consultant for the whole project, so they want B manager to also be appointed by the architect or by the lead consultant. Uh, but B manager is answerable to all, to oh. JKR, to the contractor, even uh, to the uh, project owner or user when when it related to BIM. Uh, that's why it has to be someone with. Uh, extensive uh, experience and, and knowledgeable in terms of uh, software, in terms of platform, uh, technically. Uh, for building, in most cases, most of big managers are architects because architects, by virtue of training, they are trained in multidiscipline also. The syllabus cover all, not just not just building, finishes, you have to understand structure, services, and so on. So by virtue of that, in building, yes, mostly are uh, architect with, with construction background and understanding of software or technology. But for other, of course, it can be engineers like bridges or airport and so on. So those, those are the requirement. And since BPEP is very critical, so that relate to the BIM manager can also play a very important role in, in ensuring the successful implementation of BIM project. Okay. Okay, okay. So I think that is very uh, insightful. Okay, so next question. Next question is. Okay, I think there's one question from uh, Chef Fakul Azhan. So what is your opinion? Which software is the best for uh, the best for implementation BIM in project management? Is it Synchro Pro or Revit? I think. Uh... Ah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I I'm I'm trying not to be biased. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For your information, um, the authoring software, the 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 three big one that I, I use, I have experience using them all, but currently because JKR can only accept Revit, so we have no choice. You can only use Revit for authoring, uh, oh, modeling. Okay. But I started with Akikat. Uh, Akikat has structure as well, and also EcoSim, EcoSim Bentley. So these are the three biggest uh, authoring software for BIM. And of course, they have other related software like Revit Structure, All Plan, and then for uh, if I hear it right, Synchro something. Synchro is for yes, Synchro, Synchro Pro. Synchro Pro. I think yeah. it's uh, it's been extended. It's for 4D lah, 4D. For 4D, yeah. Uh -uh. So it's not authoring software per se. Authoring mainly uh, those three uh, main one Revit, Akikat, and uh, EcoSim. Uh, which one is better? Uh, now with the uh, usage of uh, cloud uh, model, cloud link, where you can work simultaneously and and uh, refresh or synchronize or rather publish, and then the other party who are working on the same model with different element can see what changes you have made, what uh, version that you have uh, published. Uh, it seems like uh, last time the file for Revit is heavy as compared to uh, 
ecosystem for example mm. and then there are other plus minus uh, elements other than cost in terms of the storage of file the the layering or rather how they separate the the object you know, uh, where working on the file will be uh, lighter rather than heavier as you work on the big uh, project or, to, or, or big uh, file size. Uh, I would say it depends on which one you are most comfortable and also the cost and also the contract. Like last time, uh, Akiket, you can buy a perpetual license, whereas uh, Autodesk, you can subscribe yearly or, or buy a uh, by annually depend on that. So those are the considerations. But I would say, uh, I would, I would, I would not dare to give any preference. <laughs> mm -hmm. So okay. it depends on the requirement and and the compatibility. Yes. Yeah. But this, I mean, uh, the the determination of which software is, uh, I think, based on your presentation just now. Is part of, uh, I mean, uh, critical specification of part of the cont contractual requirement, right? Okay. Okay. I think next yes, question. Yes. Ah. Yes. Ah. Okay. So next question is uh, for myself also. So this one is on the uh, when you show on the scheduling about the beam processes before the RDI and RDE process is served just now. So is it possible that uh, the beam processes itself is uh, being done parallelly to, uh, together with the RDI and the RDE process? Is that okay. is that what uh, what you mean by if I wanted beam process to be more integrated with the with the uh, uh, designing process itself? Uh, yes. Uh, when 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 I mentioned uh, process, of course. Process involve time, so the mm. last component, I would I would say that is uh, lacking now in the current uh, procurement or contract is that you will not have the ability to front load your time for design process where you can do coordination, class analysis, ensuring the class free before you proceed with the construction on site. So this is the lacking. So when you ask about the scheduling and all that. Yes, uh, that is also important because once you have all the design done, then you can do a proper sequencing or simulation of the construction process. Yes. Uh, you know exactly where to source, when when should come first, and what are the requirements in terms of... Uh, it may relate to how you claim also for the project because you can relate that to the... or link to your financial uh, cash flow as well for the contractor. Because no point constructing something that you cannot claim right yes uh. <laughs> you know you 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 may have to wait until the whole thing is complete uh, then you can claim so that will affect your cash flow so it can be linked all this information can be mm. linked to all parties concerned the stakeholder because beam you know bim the the key letter there is i which is information, information yes. and how you use it to your advantage okay okay i think uh Okay, so there is one last question. Lah. So this question is from Cik Hazik. So who usually man contractor company need to call from BIM modeler? I think oh. I think what he's trying to ask is uh, uh, who is typically the BIM modeler uh, in a project? Lah. Yeah. Okay, um, if, if you have a consultant team who already uh, have their own BIM team, BIM modeler, coordinator, manager, then automatically when you appoint that consultant, they will use BIM to deliver the project. If you do not, then you may opt for companies. Even like ourselves, ZKR Architect also do BIM services for other companies. Because we have, uh, we have about 12, 13 BIM modelers uh, in, in our firm and they can do multidiscipline as well. So you can opt for, some people call it BIM consultant, but it's actually, it depends uh, on discipline. And um, if we do our own project, we do not need to appoint BIM, manage, BIM consultant or BIM manager. This is how we do it. So it depends on, on the ability of that uh, particular uh, firm or consultant. Yes, 
but if let's say the client or the project uh, uh, owner require BIM team, then immediately you have to put in your contract to appoint consultant with BIM or even to appoint contractor with BIM. Yes, correct. Correct, correct. I think I think typically uh, uh, here in PCSS, this is also what we are doing. Lah. So we are also doing the BIM services uh, in which when there are requirement from the contractor to have the BIM, they engage us to to uh, to to uh, to to generate the BIM uh, the BIM model. So, okay, I think uh, uh, that was the last question. So before closing the session today, I would like to call uh, for the last time if there are any questions from the floor. So I'll call number one, call number two. Okay, and call number. Okay, while we're ending nah. the session, just just I, I'm just showing a bit. Uh, okay. If, if there's any nah. question, yeah, just to show other than uh, uh, healthcare facilities, we do we do airport, we do R and R for uh, highway concessionaire, and this is an example of we design also dashboard and API using uh, SQL for our client. So that they can use that for FM. This is an example. They can generate the drawing or schedules. Okay, just to advertise a bit, Nasty Azlan ah, Beam sure, Institute. Can, can. Ah. <laughs> okay, you can join Beam Institute because we are multidiscipline. We invite architect, engineers, facility managers, contractors, even students. And the fee to join is only fifteen ringgit. <laughs> okay, uh, Andy is there. So. That's part of our activities at UPM. Okay. And we collaborate with universities as well. Uh, with uh, other suppliers. Okay. That's okay. all. Thank you from me, uh, Azlan. Okay. Okay. So in wrapping up our exploration on integrated BIM process today. So I think we've been treated to a session lah that was both informative and inspiring. So a special thanks uh, goes to Nchi Azamri for sharing his valuable insight. So additionally, we have a moment ahead as we present a certificate of appreciation lah to AR uh, Zamri for his contribution as today guest speaker. So once again, thank you very much AR Zamri for sharing uh, your knowledge and your information on BIM, uh, uh, you know, on integrated BIM processes lah. So before we go to the closing, uh, I would like to uh, invite everyone to open uh, to switch on their camera. So we're going to have a photo taking session together before we end this session. Lah. So uh, in thing, okay. Okay, so I think everyone is here. Uh, Bell? So let me know when you are ready, Bell. Okay, if okay. everyone can open their camera. I'm going to take a quick group photo. So we're ready. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you, Bell. So before we depart, we do. Uh, we would like to share some of uh, our services. Lah. And if any of you are interested uh, for demo on our services uh, or interested to participate in our trainings. So as uh, as you know, uh, we have trainings on Primavera P6, on 4D Pro Synco, and also even on the BIM, uh, BIM trainings. Lah. So uh, you can contact us after this webinar. So next, to ensure that uh, we can accurately track your attendance and provide you with the e-certificates, so uh, kindly uh, we would like to kindly request your participants shown to scan and fill in the attendance form available on the screen uh, on the screen. So scan this uh, QR code for your attendance lah. Uh, but I cannot see the QR code. Okay. So just scan the QR code uh, and fill up the uh, fill up the what do you call that and uh, the attendance information lah. okay the link has also been given at the uh, chat so you can also click on the link for your attendance okay so uh, lastly 
So a big thank you to our wonderful audience for joining us. So your participation and engagement have made this uh, webinar a success. Lah. So we hope you leave today with a deeper understanding on the topics covered. Uh, once again, thank you all for being part of this enlightening session. So we look forward to seeing you in our future webinars. So on behalf of PCSS, so stay safe and see you soon. And selamat berbuka puasa. So anything information that you wanted to know about uh, more with regards to this webinar uh, or with regards to our services, so you can contact us through this uh, uh, to this chat area. OK, so once again, thank you very much lah, Chet Zamri, uh, Al Zamri for your presentation. Thank you. OK, thank you. With that, I would like to conclude the session. Yes, I'm going to Thank you.